Next, we need to define something called resistance. The symbol for resistance is a capital R. And resistance is exactly what you think it would be. It is the resistance to current flow. Resistance, capital R, the resistance to current flow. Resistance, by definition, is equal to the electric potential difference per current. This isn't the way we normally see the equation written, so I'm going to write it the way we normally see it written, which is the electric potential difference equals the current times the resistance, and that's what's going to be boxed. But I'm defining resistance, so we really should have resistance equals to whatever it's equal to, which is the electric potential difference per the current. Now, what are the dimensions on resistance then? Akbar, uh, electric potential difference. Uh, <coughs> Or, sorry, volts. Volts, current, and volts per amp. Now, we have a special name for volts per amp. It's named after a guy by the name of Georg Ohm, who is not a distant relative of Mrs. Ohm's. It's spelled differently. Georg Ohm. Ohm. O-H-M. The symbol for ohms is a Greek letter omega, a capital omega, and it looks like this. To help you remember the symbol for the ohm, who can tell me why it is an unlucky horseshoe? Oh, come on. It's an unlucky horseshoe. Andy? Is it there are any ohms? No, 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 no. <laughs> this is, and it's, it's not my, I didn't choose this. This is, by definition, an unlucky horseshoe. It is unlucky because it's upside down. Does anyone know why being upside down makes it unlucky? Wow, really? Because all the luck has fallen out. <laughs> Because if it's right side up, it's holding the luck. The luck of the Irish. But when it's upside down, that's not Irish. All the luck falls out. The unlucky horseshoe. We have this pithy story simply because people forget what the dimensions, how to write an ohm. And hopefully, if we've had this pithy story, maybe you can remember the unlucky horseshoe. We'll see. All right. So we have resistance, volts per amp in ohms or unlucky horseshoes. Uh, and this, just you know, is called, called Ohm's Law. Now, it turns out that Georg Ohm proved Ohm's Law. I know it sounds amazing. Uh, and this is what he did. He showed that many substances followed Ohm's Law and therefore were considered to be ohmic. Substances that follow Ohm's law are called ohmic. And, and if you plot the electric potential difference, go ahead. By go ahead, I meant could you actually do it? No, I didn't. It didn't have to get that much. That was it. Yeah. Impressive. I know. All right. So, yeah, quietly. Uh, yeah, I, I, people don't normally sharpen pencils so quietly. Okay. When we <laughs> plot the electric potential difference as a function of current for a substance that is ohmic, we get a linear relationship. This is an ohmic substance. So let's talk about what this means. The slope, slope, the equation, the general equation for slope, Gertley is what? General equation goes to the Rise over run. Slope is rise over run. In this particular case, the rise is the electric potential difference. The run would be the current. And as you can see, the electric potential difference divided by the current is equal to the resistance. Georg Ohm showed that many substances, if you plotted the electric potential difference as a function of current, would actually give you a linear, linear relationship and therefore would follow Ohm's law, and therefore were considered to be ohmic. 
a, substances, a substance that would be non-omic would be something that looked like this. Oops. This would be non-omic. We are going to assume that all substances, unless otherwise stated, do follow Ohm's law and therefore are omic. I'm now going to talk about a picture in your text, and you might want to get it out. It's on page 708. 